How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another PT Pearl from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Dr. Dom. I'm Dr. Jen. And today we're going to be talking about nervous system tension or neural tension, what it means, what the heck nerves are, and how we can use this to better understand our movement and wellness a little bit. Nerves, again, they're part of the larger thing called the cent- or the nervous system. And we have the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system starts with the brain. And it's kind of command control center. And in reality, it's all connected. It's all one big organism, one system, our nervous system. So we need to understand that what the brain does and what all the nerves do, they're all connected in this big like spider web. Right. And it becomes peripheral when it's now coming outside of the trunk and the spinal cord. And it's now coming down to our arms and down to our legs. And it's like kind of peripherally what we can control a little bit more rather than just the signals that are being sent. But we do know that we have a bit more control over it all. And Mm -hmm. so that's what gives us power into the central nervous system to be able to control some of our systems in general and how they operate and what signals they are being told and how our body is responding to that. And it gives us a lot of power, which I think is really cool. And this is when you'll usually feel it along a path because the nerve is not just a muscle, right? It's it's moving through tissue and it's, it's connected from that spinal cord and then coming out all the way to our fingers. So sometimes it's like a line of pain that you might be feeling. So it could be different sensations in terms of it could be pain, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's what you could be feeling. It could be sensations of like tingling, maybe numbness, sometimes burning. So if you've ever had any of these sensations, this is typically all related with nerve sensations. It's like if you've been sitting on your leg for a long time mm-hmm. and then you get up to move and you feel that like tingling or that kind of numbness, that muted sensation, like that's kind of what nerve tension would feel like, but more along a specific path, not like your whole entire leg or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. that's like you re- literally ac- ac- occluded, right? Yeah. Our sensation down from that path because we're super so it's tight. It's all the nerves. It's not yeah. just like one specific nerve path. <laughs> or even think of hitting your funny bone. We're not actually hitting our bone. We're hitting our nerve that that kind of comes out in that open area in the inside of that elbow mm-hmm. and that's our ulnar nerve and so when you hit it it sh- usually shoots this like weird tingly kind of like sh- pretty sharp right away sharp pain yeah that's like it doesn't feel good you're not hitting a bone you're hitting a nerve so we do have you know special tests that we do as clinicians in order to rule out you know whether it is coming from the neck because like we said it can come all the way from within those vertebrae right Mm -hmm. so is it something that's happening from the neck or is it something that's happening further out down the road that's why it is really important to work with a clinician who feels comfortable during doing a lot of these neurodynamic testing and different than just you know oh i have this this kind of sensation that you might be talking about down the down the arm or down the hand i'm just going to do these general glides right or these yeah. this nerve flossing technique and sometimes sometimes it could help sometimes it might not be what your body needs and so working also with a professional who can say okay this we're, we're doing the special test to really understand that this is where your nerve tension is coming from and the mm-hmm. reason that it's causing it because i think that's so important sometimes you could feel it in your hand thinking you have carpal tunnel but it's really the neck that we need to be addressing and there's different ways that we can kind of you know address that and really see what is the the cause of the issue and then sometimes it can be so aggravated that we don't want to necessarily start just doing nerve tensioning and flossing in that side that's affected and so we really are working on our signaling um in in what the body is interpreting when we work Mm -hmm. on nerve tensioning or neurodynamics and so it's it is important that we start to address these within programming a little bit so that in in general as well and just start moving things before you start to feel tingling before you start to feel any any issues and numbness and and pain and other things because we don't want that body to be so sensitive we want to be aware we want to be you know have better signaling up to our brain and really be able to distinguish is it stress mm-hmm. or is it trauma you know yeah. and i and, and being able to then start to dissect that in the body is is really important and and overall we just need to know as well like your your nerves can build up inflammation around them as well and decrease the movement in which they kind of glide through that tissue and so if we don't move it as well 
it starts to build up that inflammation and get a little bit stuck. And so this is why, again, just general movement is going to help to move those nerves as well. I love starting in that bigger systemic, especially when we're talking about the nerves, especially when we're talking about sensitivity and tingling and, and shooting pain, any of that kind of sensation. Are you getting sleep? Are you getting enough water? Um, are you managing your stress levels? And, and this can even just look like journaling when the sensations come on yeah. or noting it in your phone. Like I'm at work, it feels worse. <laughs> what am I doing? What have I been doing yes. in the past hour? Like pointing those things out to yourself. Well, I've been sitting the past hour. I jumped on my phone and got some messages that I would, you know, you can start to tease these things out that have been like, okay, maybe if that wasn't in my environment at that moment, I might have been set up for more success or less stress and pain in my nervous system. <laughs> exactly. Or even was it, you know, after you ate this huge meal the next day, mm-hmm. maybe you notice some some changes in sensation. It maybe it felt a little worse. And you notice that if you kind of added more nutrients and stayed away from maybe a lot of the sugary stuff, it, it changes it. And I like to to open this up to this the whole aspect because again, if we know that there's inflammation on the nerve, then if we just start attacking it from all areas, it's going to automatically start to get better. And then we can address, you know, other things. Even me as a clinician starting out, I always went to the affected side usually to kind of see, okay, where on a basic level can we start? But even more basic than that, like let's move it back to the other side. Let's make sure the other side can even glide and, and move well before we go over to the really affected side. And I think that's such an important reminder for people, especially when we're talking about nerves. It's different than muscles, right? They're not gonna just perform the same. It's not like turning on, turning off for different reasons. It is literally being affected through the line of of tension. Mm -hmm. And that goes all the way over to the other side. So I think being so mindful of that is so incredibly important. And then we also get to realize too that, you know, nerves can get they don't have to come from the spine. So it's not like a disc issue. It doesn't have to be like a a stenosis where you're getting shortening of the area within the vertebrae. It could also be just tightness. So say you are on a computer all the time and your shoulders are always running. You're not doing much to kind of open up the chest or move into different positions. And the chest starts getting super tight. So an entrapment would be my muscle tension is so taut that it's going to press down on that nervous tissue. And now the sensations coming out of from where that nerve would move from that pec is now going to be extra sensitive. And that could come down the elbow, that could come down along the hands and the fingers, or it could be entrapment under the elbow. It could be entrapment under the yeah. carpal tunnel. I mean, there's all these different places along, and this is kind of where we go into the episode that we did on uh, thoracic outlet syndrome. Mm. And that was very early on. I want to say that was like episode six that we talked about thoracic outlet syndrome and how these different entrapments can lead to different sensations. Like a lot of people I know when they get like kind of pinchiness or anything in the shoulder, sometimes they'll, they'll report like, the pain kind of shoots down my arm. And it's not that, you know, the whole muscle along your arm is now affected. It's just that that there that extra sensation is causing some tension or whatever is happening on that nerve is saying like, oh, we don't feel good. And so it's kind of reverting down the pathway of that arm or down the pathway of that leg or whatever it may be. And it's not necessarily again, an entrapment, but it's an irritation to a specific muscle that's causing that sensation. If we pull like a, a, a baby's arm or like someone that's still developing and, and that arm yep. gets pulled really quickly, sometimes that could cause some tension at that brachial plexus, which is just where the nerves kind of come out of the neck and under the armpit area. And that can cause some damage around the nerve as well. And in general, nerves take how long to regenerate? I don't know. You hear all sorts of things like a millimeter a day or something yeah. like that. Um, a I've long heard like time. a millimeter a month. Uh, yeah. So a long time. Yeah. It's going to take a while for that to. And what what we mean by a millimeter a month is like a millimeter down your arm <laughs> that you'll be able to feel or a millimeter of the nerve length. Again, if you've had, had a nerve trauma and you wake up and can't feel your arm at all, like it, you should gain back a millimeter down that arm. Um, I don't know the exact amount of time. I don't know what study that's based on. <laughs> but, and, and all of that to say it takes time and having patience with your body and, and knowing that it's not all consistent. Like yeah. for some people, it might all like all come back. Uh, for some people, sensation might be a little bit off. And I think people who've had surgery can kind of 
understand that experience of like, oh, I'll never be able to feel this like tension around or this yeah. area around my knee. So now when we talk about specifics of neurodynamics, there's two main groups that we can go into. There's always like different levels of, along these groups. But in general, we're looking at, can we slide the the nerve through the tissue? So kind of taking one end of your hand and and then rotating the head to the same side. So kind of you know, they're all going together, one side and then the other, one side and then the other. Where tensioning is going to be, I'm going to take my hand and my head and they're going to go against each other. And then I'm going to have more of like a pooling sensation at my nerve. And this is not bad. I mean, tension, load, it all helps our body to grow, gain awareness and, and get better. But it is definitely a more extreme <laughs> and you don't want to start with tensioning. You want to start with more of the sliding exercises. And it's really just exploration too. Exploration yeah. of what's happening along our nervous system is a great place to start. But we also have to realize that when we go into this, like even us as therapists, when we're starting to just like kind of test this on people, they're usually lying down on a table. So they're flat and stable. We usually pull down the shoulder so that again, we have some shoulder stability and then we move the arm. So if you're doing it standing and you don't really have, if you're bent over, if you're rounded, if you're kind of cranked in your neck, if you're, you know, it could, it definitely can change what we're going, what signal we're going to be putting out or what, what tension or what slide we're going to be putting out. And so there's just so many different ways to start to explore. And this is why it's not like, yes, we want you to explore into the nerves, but we also want to know how that changes when I move my body, how that changes when I move my back, my spine, my neck. And, you know, this is some of the mobility flows that we explore in the optimal body because we want to know, like, if I mobilize my back, do I get more freedom, you know, out into my fingers and out into my hand, out into my nerves and, and kind of playing the role of incorporating this whole body system is just what we always talk about so it's more functional and not just so static yeah a lot of the times when i would have people having like these nerve sy uh, symptoms down their arm and stuff i would get the biggest change when we did some like mobilizations to their back or their neck and worked on the shoulder blade a little bit and then all of a sudden you free up that whole kind of system or that line down that side and it changes things so much which is where jen and i always talk about kind of this um intersegmental uh interdependence of the segments or whatever which they all kind of depend on what the other does um in how they function exactly and so continuing to explore what your body is able to do and and how that all responds together understanding and 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 playing along with that and we're not exasperating anything we're not holding anything for nerve tension for a long time we're exploring it we're pulling out of it we're exploring it we're pulling out of it and we're listening if i do it five times and i increase my symptoms i'm not doing it again. I think that's really important to note too. And it really does feel good when you kind of work on these different areas. We do it yeah. in the optimal body and it's just, I always feel so much better after I've like addressed all the nerves around my leg or all the nerves through my arms in different areas. It just, it helps to free things up and, and just continue to explore. Thanks for learning with us again on another PT Pearl from the Optimal Body Podcast. Remember, there's more information in the full audio. So make sure to go over to the website, check out the full audio so that you learn even more about your body. This is just your way of being able to see what we're doing and ask more questions. <laughs>